I'm going to go in depth with the budget development update and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you love Destiny and learning all things about the game, then subscribe and click on the bell icon, that way you guys don't miss out on anything. So, real quick, let me explain why I haven't been uploading these past few days and the reason why I'm late with this video. I have been in the hospital, again. But this time, it wasn't for my back injury. This time, it was for a kidney stone. My first ever one, actually. Because of this, I have been out of commission for a couple of days and I have endured pain that made this grown man cry like a baby. I do not wish this pain upon anyone. Luckily for me, my kidney stone wasn't extremely big, but it was big enough. I still have to flush it out and I do have meds for the pain, and thankfully, none of my meds make me drowsy. Listen, even if you are young, your health is very, very important, and the older you get, we really need to take care of our bodies. All that sugar and sodium and all that stuff we shouldn't be eating, that we do all the time, isn't good for our body. And all I'm saying is please take care of your body because it is the only one you have. Now, I'm doing this video because not a lot of people like to read and more so are audio learners. But if you prefer to read instead, then I will put a link to the blog in the description. So, a couple of days ago, Bungie had released a blog on Bungie.net letting us know of their plans for the future of Destiny 2. They explained that expansions are content that is purchased, seasons are content that is available to all Destiny players, and that Eververse is electively purchased or earned in game. Bungie states that Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, as well as their rewards will be available to everyone as part of Season 2, and that new changes to seasonal rewards for the Crucible, Strikes, and Trials of the Nine will be available to all players. But let's talk about some of the changes in the game. And we are going to start with Eververse, because this is a highly talked about subject among the Destiny community. There will be three changes to Eververse. The first change will shift the balance for new content from Bright Engrams to Activity Rewards. So that means when you complete an activity, things like Ghosts, Sparrows, and Ships will be added to those reward pools instead of Eververse. The next change is that there will be a new way to earn Bright Engrams as well as Event Engrams. And the last change will give players a more direct way to purchase and make adjustments to Bright Engrams to get the items we want more of. These changes will begin on February 13, 2018, which is the beginning of the Crimson Days event. During this time, after completing the Nightfall, the Raid, and Crimson Days milestones, this will reward us with an exclusive legendary emote, weapon skin, and exotic sparrow. We will earn double engrams when we level up, which will consist of one crimson engram and one illuminated engram. Crimson engrams can draw from Crimson Days matches in Crucible and on the Crimson Days milestone on each character. And all Crimson engrams will be balanced to give you new rewards every time you decrypt them until all new items have been obtained. Now, let me make this clear. This is not saying you won't get duplicates. It's just a less likely chance. Experience rates haven't changed, but Bungie is still trying to look for a way to get this fixed. Now, there are three releases that Bungie wants us to pay attention to. The first being on January 30th, which is when Masterwork Armor will be coming to Destiny 2. What Masterwork Armor will do is it will reduce incoming damage when your super is active. That's it. Now, I do see a positive to this. For example, when I am trying to use my Nova Bomb and I'm getting team shot to the ground before I can get it off by two people, hopefully in this scenario, if we have a full Masterwork armor set, we will be able to survive team shooting from at least two people when we are using our super. If that's not the case, then Masterwork armor is useless. So, Masterwork Armor will work the same as Masterwork Weapons, and it will increase the stat, most likely Mobility, Resilience, or Recovery, and it will take Masterwork Cores and Legendary Shards to re-roll them. Next, the Raid Rewards will change. They will now have mods with Raid-specific perks, similar to the Taken King. Raid Item Drops will be adjusted so that we will get them for each encounter and not just the first one and the boss. The raid vendor will directly sell raid and raid layer armor and weapons for purchase with raid tokens and legendary shards. 
The second release is in February, when we'll be getting Strike Scoring and Strike Tracking. Strike Scoring will be replacing the Nightfall Time Warp system, and will be similar to Destiny 1's system, but it'll be more focused on a competitive edge. High scores will be posted in-game via new emblems and will unlock rewards, which Bungie hasn't really said anything about them yet. They also have a plan for clan and community high scores in the works as well. Mods 2.0 will also be introduced in February, which it will be a full rework of weapon and armor mods. I mean, what's the point of giving us masterwork armor in January? If you're just going to change it, that makes no sense. Anyways, Mods 2.0 will focus on reducing redundant mods, more unique theming, and greatly increase their impact on your power. Bungie is also trying to see how they can implement mods into the bright engram economy, but focusing on it so it's not pay to win. The Crucible Quick Play game mode will be adjusted to increase the pace of gameplay and power ammo acquisition. Now, I'm guessing that they are going to make power ammo drops more consistent. Tower chat as well as clan chat will be coming to the PC version of Destiny 2. Finally, Bungie is going to do something with the whole exotic repetition, kind of. Now, what they plan on doing is preventing us from, quote, receiving the same exotic twice in a row, end quote. But with this, we can still get duplicates, just not one after the other. Also in February, we will finally be able to see our fire team members on our destination map. Yay! No. This should have been done in September 2017. We've been asking for it since then. Just saying. The last release is for spring 2018 sometime. They didn't really specify when. This will include crucible ranking, private matches, and a little bit more crucible related activities. Independent of Expansion 2, which means not including Expansion 2, these new features to Crucible will come before or during Season 3 to every player in Destiny 2, not just people with expansions. Crucible Ranking will introduce two new rank structures, Valor and Glory. Valor is a progression rank that goes up as you complete matches and winning helps you move up faster, but there is no loss penalties. Glory is a progression rank that goes up when you win and down when you lose, and performance is how you move up here. Private matches are returning to Destiny 2, and they will work similar to the way they did in Destiny 1. So, Eugene, you better start practicing because I'm gonna whoop that ass again. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna pass you off to Didi so she can whoop that ass for the first time. <laughs> Speaking of Destiny 1, the return of the 6v6 playlist are coming back in addition to the current 4v4 game modes. The Crucible game mode Mayhem will return as a limited time event during Season 3, and I'm sure if you wanted to, you can play Mayhem in private matches as well. Bungie is also trying to implement changes to make quitting less common and improvements on security to help provide a better experience in the Crucible. Wrapping everything up, which is something I'm not good at. <laughs> Changes to the sandbox will be made and introduced to us as we get closer to Season 3. Exotic armor and weapons will be looked at so they stand out from the rest of the gear. Seasonal reputation will be displayed on specific vendors. Improvements to Iron Banner and Faction Rallies will be coming but nothing specific on that yet. There will be a playlist repetition reduction that way we are not going back into the same playlist that we just finished in PvE or PvP. As for the end game player pursuits, we have already discussed this when we talked about Everest earlier on in the video. Now it also looks like Bungie has turned the exotic emote wheel into a multi emote wheel instead. With this we will be able to change all emotes in all four slots. As for vault space, Bungie is adding an additional 50 slots to our vaults. I don't know how people are hoarding so much things in their vault. Like, I have three of every weapon in my vault or one weapon that I use on every character and one set of armor even if I don't use it in my vault with shaders, ships, sparrows, ghosts, and I still have a lot of vault space in the exotics that I don't use stay in the collections tab unless I have an ornament on them. 
So why do we need more vault space? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But one thing that I do like that Bungie is doing is adding an exotic accessory tab to the vault in order for us to store our exotic ships, sparrows, and ghosts. Similar to what the kiosks did in Destiny 1. So that means do not, and I repeat, do not buy another Sagira ghost shell for 100 legendary shards after you unlock it. And last but not least, for things that apply in early 2018, Heroic Strikes will be receiving modifiers to add more gameplay variety to the experience. Okay, so that was everything. Now, I didn't mention anything for Fall of 2018 because we haven't even gotten to Summer of 2018 yet, so the Fall can wait. As for my thoughts on the update, I do like a lot of what Bungie is doing, but it does seem that they are kind of going backwards and just taking things from Destiny 1 and just throwing it in Destiny 2. Destiny 1 had a great system and I can see why they are doing this. Hopefully this will bring a lot of the player base back to the game and improve on what Destiny 2 is before Destiny 3 is released in the future. So what do you guys think about the update? You've already heard my thoughts while we were going through it and a lot of the changes that Bungie want to implement in this update are interesting but then some of them are kind of far-fetched. Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these other two Destiny videos. You never know, you might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, and I will be doing my Zer video regardless.